Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's session, we're going to be looking at the two point perspective type of illustration. Today, you're going to need a sheet of A4 paper, a pencil, ruler, and if you've got one, an eraser. Let's get started. Okay, so I've taken another sheet out of a booklet I use at the Academy, but it's fine. Treat this as a blank sheet of A4. You'll notice that here with the two point perspective, we have two vanishing points and we will call those VP1 and VP2. Okay, so a two point perspective drawing essentially is a type of drawing style in which we would use uh, to create three dimensional objects on a two dimensional space. Uh, the only difference here between one point perspective and two point perspective, of course, naturally we have those two vanishing points instead of just the one and we don't need horizontal lines. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to place straight through a horizon line to begin with. And if anyone has came from my one point perspective drawing, you'll know that the horizon line is very important because anything above the horizon line, we're going to be able to see things underneath it. So anything is going to be sort of, we can see underneath. And if we have anything below the horizon line, then when I take them back to the vanishing point, we can see on top of it. Okay, so how this differs from the one point perspective is we start with vanishing point one and then we'll go from there. So we'll pull a, a, a point out and uh, let's make it nice and faint so you guys can barely see it at home because these would be construction lines like so. And then vanishing point two and it'll cross. Then I can use my vertical line and from the top of this point here, you don't need to draw the circle, that's just to show you where I'm going from. I'm going to go back towards vanishing point one, and I'll head back towards vanishing point two on the other side. And then hopefully you should end up with this sort of, these, these two lines that project off back to the vanishing points. Now I can place anywhere on here a vertical line, and it's just got to go straight up and straight down. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that a little bit clearer there. Uh, I'm not going at an angle, I'm always going straight up and straight down, so just a vertical line. And notice, notice here that I often go straight through them. A lot of students make this mistake, they try and join them up like that, and they make mistakes by not doing them vertical. So one thing I tell students to do is just go straight up and straight down, making sure that that line's nice and vertical. Okay, now where these two points have joined or crossed, and where these two points have crossed, they go back to their representative vanishing point. So in this case, this one over here, this little guy, he can't go back to vanishing point one because he's already going that way. So I'm going to send him off to vanishing point two. And I'm going to send this guy off to vanishing point one. You see what we've done there? Now, if I grab a darker shade, and I just go around this with a darker color, you'll spot that actually now what I've got is that three-dimensional cuboid shape. And this is the same when I'm sketching it or drawing it with a pencil and paper, except I keep my lines faint for construction lines and I, I press on quite hard once I'm doing my final lines like so. And then there I have my three-dimensional cuboid shape in two-point perspective. And of course, because it's below the horizon line, we can see on top of it. Now, if we were to do the same thing again with, uh, I'll go light again. So this time I'm going to pull a line across. Let's shoot over here somewhere. And then vanishing point two will cross it. And then where they cross, put my vertical line back in. And let's make this quite tall. Let's bring this down. So the taller I make it, the bigger the, the cuboid is going to be. And then... I'm going to just simply go back from the end towards vanishing point two and then back off towards vanishing point one like so then I end up with those those projection lines and I can place on here anywhere so I could I could put a line there a vertical line through there like that and that's going to be quite a boxy piece and some students always go well 
If it's say, where do I put my line? I don't know where to put it. It doesn't really matter. I could put it there. I could put it down here. It just means my box is going to be ginormous. In fact, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll leave both of those in. We'll do something with them. So from here, I'm heading back towards Vanishing Point 2. And when people scratch their heads and they go, how do you know that to go back to Vanishing Point 2 from there? Well, I can't go back to Vanishing Point 1 from there because I already have done. It's the same thing from here. I can go back to Vanishing Point 2. And there, back to Vanishing Point 2. Okay, now things are starting to look really complicated. So what I need to do is place in here a vertical line that cuts through those two parts like that. And then from here, I'm going to head back towards Vanishing Point 1. And what's nice about that is it's, it's helped me with my drawing quite a bit there. Now, if I darken that off and just go around it so you can see what I've done. And the beauty of me doing it digitally is that my ruler kicks in. I get a nice straight edge instead of doing it like a sketch, which is nice. There we go. So I've got one of my shapes there. But actually, I can nick this part and pull it across like this. And then that's the bottom of another piece. And then there's a vertical piece like that. Let's straighten that up. There we go. And now what I can do, because I've, I've kind of already started with those projection lines. I've already gone back to vanishing point one. I've already gone back in that direction. What I can now do is just nick a vertical line there and then from this little point I'll head back towards vanishing point two but stop when I get to that box and then now I've got another two boxes there instead so that's quite exciting there now what, what I can do now is just show you what would happen if we put it on the horizon line so let's just say for example for argument's sake we're going to place a line straight there on the middle and I'm going to go back to vanishing point two and if I tell you what I'll do I'll just make it a little bit lighter for my construction lines there you go so that heads back to vanishing point two this one heads back to vanishing point one and I can just put my vertical line in there and I put another vertical line in there like that and I can darken that this off but what happens is like in one point perspective and it's the same in two point perspective if i've got a drawing on the horizon line i can't see above or below it it's, it's, lit it's literally the same as holding a pen at eye level i can't see above the pen and i can't see below the pen but once i bring it down below the horizon line i can see on top and once i bring it above my eyes i can see underneath that's how perspective is going to work now if this was your your drawing and you've done this in your class for your classroom teacher then I would say at this stage we really need to add a little bit of shading in there so I'm going to go and grab myself uh, my pencil so I'm going to go to sketching grab my fat pencil and then I'm going to tilt my page and I'm going to shade underneath because this is going to be all in shadow Also, it makes your drawing stand out a lot by adding that, that shade element to it. And if that one's in shadow, this one's got to be in shadow. A little tip for you, always shade in the same direction, unless you need to clean the edges up like that. But always try and aim to shade in the same direction, otherwise your work will start to look messy. And then you, you, can, you can always come back in and just tidy those bits up later. So that was quite nice. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to imagine I've got a slightly lighter shade there. So for you guys at home, this is quite easy. You can just shade lighter. I have to actually change the color of my digital pencil. Like that. And then this one as well. I'll just speed this one along a little bit. And then I can add a little bit of shadow here as well and really make the design of this perspective drawing really sort of start to stand out. Now swapping angles is fine as long as you keep the shading in the same direction. So you'll notice there that I've started going across instead of up and down. That's okay as long as you keep your shading in the same direction. So 
there we go nice little drawing of perspective there now don't know what other classroom teachers think about this certainly from my point of view i quite like to see the construction lines on there and uh, if it was a final drawing or a finished drawing then yes by all means rub those out you could use your razor and you can take out uh, the bits you don't want like i'm doing here in the corners but quite honestly uh, from a drawing point of view from a teacher looking at a student's work point of view i want to see those construction lines i want to see how you've created that object if you've created something and it's not quite right i want to be able to see what you've done to, to sort of go wrong there so i can say well you've added a horizontal line where you shouldn't have done or you've not gone back to your vanishing point so leave those on for your classroom teachers to check and uh, they'll be able to sort of advise you where you've gone wrong in that perspective drawing uh, okay so we're gonna, pretty much going to wrap up there these are the basics um quite simple shapes to begin with i don't want to go into too much detail here because in my next video we're going to go into something far far more complicated so we'll wrap it up there okay so what have we learned in today's session we've had a look at the two-point perspective style of drawing we've placed in our vanishing point one and vanishing point two with an x or a cross in either sides of our a4 sheet of paper we place that horizon line straight through the middle of the page so we knew anything below it we could see on top anything above it we could see underneath we applied our perspective drawing by adding three or four rectangular cuboid shapes in three dimensions and then we applied shadow to them to make them really stand out in our next video we're going to be looking at creating a more complicated two-point perspective drawing where we take some of the things that we've looked at in today's session and apply them to a much more complicated drawing as always i'll place you a video just here to forward you on to that video and if you haven't done so already consider subscribing it's free it helps the channel and it means you'll never miss another video so click on my little face so that you don't miss another one until next time stay safe bye now